right, let's try this out. So um, I just want to go through the practice exam, and that way you all have a reference in case you're feeling overwhelmed. Um, here we go. So uh, question one, multiply all this stuff out. So the whole thing is, you know what, let's make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay. The whole idea is you can combine like terms. So the 8 and the 2, we can put those two together and we'll get a 16. Um, the w cubed, there's also a w to the fourth. And when we multiply two things that are the same base, which in this case is w, and they have different exponents, then we can add the exponents and I'll get w to the seven. Then we have, oh, I missed the two. Sorry, there's another two here, so this should actually be 32. That's okay. All right, and then we have u. So there's three u's and then another u. And so in total, we have four u's. So putting everything together, what we have is 32 uh, w to the 7 and then u to the fourth all right let's check that there we go all right on to the next one so express without parentheses all right so on the one hand you could you know to cube something means you multiply it by itself three times so I could multiply this by itself three times. a to the fourth minus four, b squared, a to the fourth. My handwriting gets progressively worse. And once it's written out like this, there's actually no need to write parentheses. And we can see we have one, two, three of the negative fours. And so that ends up being negative, let's see, 16 from 64. Uh, I have three of the b squareds, which gets me six b's in total. And I have three of the a to the fourths, which gets me a to the twelfth. So there's my answer, negative 64, b to the 6. If you're curious how I'm getting these exponents without clicking those buttons, it's shift 6 on most keyboards. It's that little character there. And you have to arrow over, and so then I have a, shift 6, 12. Okay, so that should do it. There we go. All right, let's simplify this. So the whole idea, um, well, I guess... Uh, I could say, look, this this will cancel one, will it be the 6? Um, as far as y, well, if I wrote out the top, there's 7 b's. Uh, 4, 5, 6, 7. And on bottom, there's 1 b, and one of them cancels. So then there's 6 b's left. So that's what's going on there. And the same idea with the a's. So on top, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. On bottom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All those cancel all those. We're left with 1 on bottom. So I have a b to the 6 on top and an a on bottom. Now when I enter this, instead of clicking the fraction button, I'm going to click the forward slash. Um, oh, sorry, wrong keyboard. I'm going to click the forward slash. <laughs> there we go. Um, which for me is right next to my shift key on the right-hand side of the keyboard. It's uh, shared with the question mark. Anyway, uh, so now I have b to the 6 on top. And if I hit tab, that brings me down to the bottom. And I have a. So there we go. Let's check that. There we go. All right, rewrite the expression without using negative exponents. All right, so um, when we have fractions with multiplication, we can always split up fractions um, via multiplication. And what I mean by that is where the multiplication occurs, we can think of as multiple different fractions. So uh, negative five, sorry. So this is what I mean. I can just put the uh, one over negative three and then the one over p to the negative five and, and separate things. And they're combined by multiplication because they were combined by multiplication, okay? This only works with multiplication. It does not work with addition. This is not equal to uh, one over three to the negative, or whatever, you know what I'm trying to say. And then p to the negative five, that's not the case. So don't do it. It only works for multiplication, uh, which means it also works for addition because those are really kind of the same thing. Okay, so a negative exponent just means uh, you, you flip. So if you were a numerator, you become a denominator. If you were a denominator, you become a numerator. So now I've gotten rid of this negative here. So that's why that's no longer negative. But in order to get rid of it, so one over P to a negative one is just P. And if this was a five, it'd be five. Okay, negative five would be five. And that's, so the way I wrote it here looks different than the way it was written, which is like this. But these are really the same thing because uh, the one on top, the number one is the same as one to the negative five. 
And now that both of these have the same exponent, that's how I could get over here. But anyway, um, so that's how we would do that one. So what was it? It was, uh, we have p to the 5 over negative 3. Okay. There we go. All right. So uh, last time I wrote this out and I did four copies, um, or last time it was really three copies because I had a different exponent. This time, let's just do a power rule. So if I have um, something with an exponent raised to a power, then I can multiply these two exponents. So what is four times negative seven? It's negative 28. Okay, but now I need to not use negative exponents. I need to not use that, so what do I do? This v is an enumerator, right? I could think of this as v over one, so I flip it to be the denominator. So now I have one over v to the 28. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. One v to the 28. All right, there we go. All right, evaluate the expression when x is equal to negative six. So that just means we plug in negative six for x. Okay, so x gets squared x gets multiplied by 5, and then we subtract 2. So what is this? That's 36 minus 30 minus 2. If you add it all up, you get 4. So there we go. Great. All right, let's try and finish this out. So we need to simplify. Uh, simplify means uh, you're going to cancel whatever you can cancel, and you're going to combine like terms and stuff. So in this case, I want to distribute the negative 6. So we have negative 3w minus 3x minus 3x minus 7w. Okay, so this minus 6 hits both of those terms, and minus 6 times minus 3 is positive 18 with a w. Minus 6 and minus 3 is positive 18 with an x. And then I distribute the negative 3, and, well, I guess it would be a minus 3x, and then plus 21w. And then I put everything together, so I put the w's with the w's and the x's with the x's. And it looks like we have, well, I guess I'll write it out so 20, it's 39 w's and 18 minus 15 x's. All right, so let's write that down. We have, where's my cursor? This is, I guess I'm already in there. Okay, so we have 39 w and 15 x. All right. This is so weird. Sorry, I, uh, there we go. Nice, good. Okay, cool. Uh, to the next one. Let's leave it there. All right, simplify again. So we're just gonna combine like terms. All right, we have six x squared, and then uh, there's negative three x, plus a negative 4x if I look at the middle term on the left and the first term on the right. And so together they make negative 7x. I have to add them, right? Because that's I have something plus something, and so that term and that term, and I'm adding them. All right, and then negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. So all in all, I have 6x squared minus 7x minus 6. Right, cool. All right, continue. <laughs> right, the following is a radical. Okay, so a denominator on an exponent. So if I have something like 10 to the a over b, then b tells you what root you're taking, whereas a tells you the power on 10. So in this case, I have 10 with the seventh root, and I could write the first power, but I really don't need to. So it's just the seventh root of 10. So uh, we have 7, tab, 10. Great. And there we go. All right. Sweet. Can I scroll this over? Eh, maybe not. Okay. Simplify. All right. Well, root 50 is the same thing as root 2 times 25, and that's the same thing as root 2 times root 25, and that's the same thing as root 2 times 5. But we tend to write it as 5 root 2, 
not that it really matters. And I'm curious, if I, if I type SQRT, oh, it doesn't like it. It doesn't like any of that. Okay, fine. We'll just do that. Two. Great. Check. Here we go. Continue. All right. Simplify again. So, um, now on the one hand, I could say, like, you know, we just add them together and we have 10 copies of root 14. But if that seems weird or we don't quite see it, then um, realize when we have 9 of something, so in this case 9 root 14s, then what that means is I have a root 14 plus a root 14 plus a root 14. Oh, I got to do 9 of these. Plus a root 14 plus a root 14 plus a root 14. Three more. Plus a root 14 plus a root 14, plus a root 14, right? That's what it means to have nine copies, and I add on one more copy, and so now I have ten of them, okay? So, um, yeah, fine, I'll, I'll type it. I, uh, I was going to say, you can just, you can just trust me. It's, it's going to be correct, I promise, um, but I guess I'll go through it just like you. All right, next. All right, if I take a number in a square root, and I square it, then it sort of cancels the square root. And what does it mean to square something? Well, it means I multiply it by itself. So that would also get me here. And that's exactly what's happening here. So root 7y times root 7y, the roots go away because you've now squared it, and you just get 7y. And we can also see this with numbers if that all feels mysterious. Math is a science, and this is what an experiment looks like. If you want to like test an experiment to check a hypothesis, right? So we have a hypothesis, and now I'm going to check it with some numbers I know. What is the square root of 4? It's 2. What is the square root of 4? It's 2. When I multiply it, I get 4. So yes, indeed. If I multiply this with that, I just get what's on the inside, right? So, all right, uh, 7y. Check. Continue. All right, almost halfway, so multiply will do, um, if I can just write it correctly. All right, so we have 2b plus 5 and 6b plus 1. All right, so I could just tell you, look, you have to multiply every term by every other term. So that means the 2b has to multiply the 6b and the 1, and the 5 has to multiply the 6b and the 1. And that's totally fine. And if you're happy with that, uh, you can fast forward a bit. Um, and so if I do that, so 2 and 6 is 12b squared. And then uh, 2 and 1, I have 2b. And then 5 and 6, there's 30 more b's. And 5 and 1 is 5. And so everything together is 12b squared plus 32b plus 5. Um, the other thing, or the other way we could think about this, okay, so... Um, b represents a number, and 2 times b is therefore also a number, and if I add 5, that's also a number. So, in fact, this entire thing in parentheses is one number, and you can distribute that one number to both of these, and what that looks like is I need to take that number, 2b plus 5, and multiply it by 6b, plus. I need to take that number, 2b plus 5, and multiply it by 1, right? So, this is the other way we can think of distributing when we have a product of binomials. And now you multiply in the 6b and you multiply in the 1, except you don't need to because it's 1. Regardless, you'll get back here at the same answer. So 12b squared uh, plus 32b plus 5. All right. New. All right, let's multiply this. And this is actually a difference of squares. So anytime you have something minus something, or I should say thing one minus thing two, and then thing one plus thing two, and you multiply them, what you're going to get if you work it all out is a squared minus b squared. Um, so I would encourage you, if you don't see it, to do all of these and uh, check it for yourself. So in this case, my a is being played by 7, and my b is being played by 5y. So a squared is 49. And b squared, well, if I square 5, it's 25. And if I square y, it's y squared. So there we go. Continue. All right, rewrite without parentheses and simplify. Sure thing. So we're doing this. And we would distribute, distribute. And when 
everything is said and done. So we're gonna have two copies of 5v, one from that, one from that. We're gonna have a 25 at the end, and putting everything together, we get v squared plus 10v plus 25. Alright, multiply this out. So we have root 5, 4, root 14, plus root 5. Okay, so 14 is 2 times 7, so there's not a copy of 5 there. And so in fact, when I multiply this, uh, the 4 stays in front, and underneath the square root, I'm going to do 5 times 14. And it turns out that's 70, so I have 4 root 70, plus... And here, underneath the square root, you can think of it as I multiply the fives, and you would get plus five. Or, if you remember the previous problem, uh, if you take a square root and you multiply it by itself, you get what's on the inside, right? So there's different ways to think about it, but here we are. So it's four square root of 70 plus five. factor. Okay, so I'll do it the way that we talked about in class. So I take the coefficient on the y squared. Oh, I guess let me write this down first. Okay, I take the coefficient on the y squared and the constant term. So the 5 and the 3, and I multiply them. And that gets me 15. And I do that because I need to set up a system of equations. So I'm creating new variables that I'm just calling a and b. It doesn't matter what you call them. They are temporary things. Okay, so I need two numbers that multiply to get 15. And we know 3 and 5 multiply to get 15, but maybe they're not the numbers we want. Because I also need these numbers, not B, sorry, not blech, whatever, to add to get 16. So this middle number here is what they have to add to. Okay? Ooh, so what do we do? Well, um, let's just start making a list of how we can multiply and get 15. Well, I could take 1 times 15 and full stop, we solved it, there we go, right? 1 times 15 is 15, 1 plus 15 is 16. So now, um, one of these is A and one of these is B, okay? And it really doesn't matter uh, who's who. Uh, it just matters how you group it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have 5y squared plus, and instead of 16y, we're going to write um, 1y. You don't actually have to write the 1, but that's this one right here, so I just want to emphasize it. And 15y, and then plus 3. And notice, right, this is the same as 16y. I just split it apart. And now, the way I wrote it is actually in the wrong order, and I did it intentionally just to show you what would happen. So the next step would be to, oh, actually, you know what? I guess this will still work out. Yeah, it'll still work out. Great. So there is no wrong order. Um, I'll show you both scenarios so you see what I just saw. Um, okay, so the next step is to figure out what these two have in common. Well, it looks like they have a y in common, and that's about it. 5y plus 1. Now we figure out what these two have in common. And it looks like I have a 3 in common, and what's left over is 5y plus 1. And that's good. You should always have the same thing in parentheses left over. So now if I factor out the 5y plus 1, then what's left over is a y from the first term and a 3 from the second term. So that's going to be our answer. All right. Now, let's see what happens if instead of doing this order, I do the other order. So, why don't you like my eraser? Okay. If I do 15y plus 1y, same process. So now I factor out, what do these two have in common? Well, they have a 5y in common. And what's left over? Well, a y and a 3. All right. What do they, oh, well, there's nothing I can really do, so I'm just going to write 1, y, and a 3. And notice, 5y plus 1, that'll be here, and then y plus 2, that'll be there. So either way, you get the right answer. All right, so we have y plus 3, 5y plus 1, and there we go. Check. Continue. Make this big again. Okay. Factor. All right, same idea. So a times b is equal to, and I'm going to do 9 times 2, I get 18. All right. But then a plus b had better equal 3. Oh, I messed up. I messed up. I wrote 18, and I said 9 times 2. 
but actually our polynomial is nine squared, or sorry, nine x squared plus three x minus two, and so we should use a negative two, okay? So I actually want negative 18. There we go, much, much better. Great, now we can actually solve this problem. Okay, so again, a strategy that will always work is you start with just writing one and 18, and then you ask yourself, okay, will that work? Well, no, it won't. Okay, so then increase one, and we go to two. Okay, does two divide 18? Yes, it does, you'll get nine. Okay, can we combine two and nine to get three in some way? No, we can't add them, we can't subtract and get three. Okay, how about three? Well, if I divide it, I get six. Ah, six minus three, that would get me three. So in fact, I guess what I want is a negative three and a positive six. And now if I multiply them, I'll get my negative 18. And if I add them, I'll get my positive three. Okay, so now, uh, remember this, this three X that's in the middle, I'm instead gonna write it as minus three X plus six X. I use these two numbers and I put X's on them and I add them together because when I add those two numbers together, I'm gonna get three. So I'm gonna get the three. Okay. Where are we? Where are we? Minus two. Minus two. All right. What do the first two terms have in common? Looks like a three X to me. What's left over? Three X minus one. All right. What do the next two terms have in common? And by the way, we'd better get three X minus one. So I guess I'm just gonna pull out a two. All right. And putting everything together, three X plus two, three X minus one. There we go. Uh, oops, the parentheses. Three X plus two. The order doesn't matter, but who cares? Uh, 3x minus 1. There we go. Check. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Continue. Great. Where are we at? 19 of 29. Oh, boy. All right. So remember, your, your actual test, by the way, it's only going to be 10 questions. Okay. So um, you could do the exact same process here. So I would take 1 times negative 9 and I'd set up my equation. A times B times B is equal to negative nine. A plus B is equal to zero. Because, right, this, this function here um, looks like this. So uh, I have a one and I have a negative nine. And so I'd set this up, but then my middle term is zero, right? So, okay, I need two numbers that multiply to get negative nine and add to get zero. Oh, well, if you add add to get zero, they have to be equal and opposite. So how about three and negative three, right? And it turns out this factor is x minus three, x plus three. This is what's called a difference of squares because x is being squared and three is being squared. And that's the polynomial that we have, right? Okay, so anyway, um, da, 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 let's write this down. x minus three, x plus three. Great, check. Continue. All right, factor completely. Minus two v squared minus three v plus 14. All right, I set up my equations. A times B is negative two times 14 is negative 28. A plus B is negative three. Okay. All right, and uh, again, you could start at one and have one and 28 and that's not gonna work and go to two and you have two and 14 and that's not gonna work and you go to three and you go, wait, three doesn't even divide 28. Okay, fine. And you go to four, ah, four and seven. Now we're looking good, okay? I need to get a negative three, so it better be a negative seven because now when I add these things, I'm gonna get the negative three, right? Okay, so I write the first term and then instead of writing this middle term, I use these two numbers as coefficients on x, plus four x minus seven x. Then I write the last term. 14. What do these two have in common? Oh, <laughs> sorry. I started writing X's instead of V's. There we go. V, V, V. All right. What do they have in common? Well, um, it's kind of up to me if I want to uh, factor out a negative 2 or not. Um, so I'll just leave the negative in and I'll factor out a 2V. Okay. So now what's left over is a negative V uh, plus 2. Great. All right. And so I had better have a negative V plus 2 left over. And hey, look, I have a negative seven and a positive four. It looks like I'll factor out a seven. So in fact, I have two V plus seven, negative V plus two. And you know, I would hope that I could actually write this as um, two V, sorry, V plus seven, and uh, then flip it and just do two minus V. It's one less symbol to have to type and it should accept that because it is correct. So yeah.
All right, simplify. So we have to factor the top. And again, we have a difference of squares. We have a v squared and we have a six squared. And so it's gonna factor as v minus six, v plus six. But if you don't see it, just go through the factory method we've done before. And remember, um, you have no uh, linear term, which means there's a zero coefficient. Uh, and then you have a negative 36, negative 36. And so you need two numbers, a and b, that multiply to get negative 36 and that add to get zero, okay? So you can either recognize when you have a difference of squares or just do the same algorithm as before. And then it's actually really fast. Uh, v minus six, v plus six, okay? Whoa, oh, <laughs> oops, sorry. All I did was factor the top, I need to cancel. Uh, so I have v minus six, v plus six, divided by v plus six. And here's the thing, v represents a number, v, that's a number. If you add six to that, guess what? That's also a number. So these two things cancel just the way numbers would. And then what's left over is V minus six. It shouldn't care about the parentheses. Yeah, good, all right. Okay, solve for X. So um, something we did not get to in <laughs> my really weird activity that I had to try is uh, talking about solving for stuff. So. Before I actually answer this question, um, I just want to ask, like, what happens to x? What happens to x? And implicitly, I'm talking about, like, in order. Okay? So, like, what's the... If you had to compute... Um, like, pretend for a moment x was 2, and you had to compute the right-hand side in your calculator. Okay? What's the first thing you would do? I bet your answer is I'd multiply by 3. Right? So the first thing that happens is we multiply by 3. What's the next thing you would do in your calculator? And I bet you'd say I would subtract 11. What's the last thing you would do? Well, then I would divide by five, right? Okay, so this is how you would actually compute the right-hand side. When you're solving for x, um, instead of going in order, one, two, three, you go in the opposite direction and do the opposite thing. So the first thing we would do is multiply by five, because that's the opposite of dividing by five. And so let me show you what I mean. Uh, we have minus 4 is equal to 3x minus 11 over 5. And the first thing I'm going to do is multiply by 5 times 5. So now I have negative 20 is equal to 3x minus 11. Okay. All right. So what's the second thing we do? Well, if I just go up in my list, instead of subtracting 11, I want to add 11. And yeah, if I, uh, I guess I already have a different color, so we can just run with it. If I add 11 to both sides, these cancel, just like these fives canceled. And negative 20 plus is negative 9 is equal to 3x. Okay, fine. And what's the last thing I want to do? Well, the opposite of multiplying by 3 is to divide by 3. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to divide by 3, I'm going to divide by 3, and I get minus 3 is equal to x. Ah, okay, x is negative 3. There we go. Continue. So you don't have to think of it that way. There's many ways to solve these problems. Um, and yeah, I'll just leave it at that. You just kind of want to get the variable by itself. So uh, what am I going to do in this case? So 1 half is equal to 1 fifth u minus 7 over 6. Let's go ahead and add 7 over 6 to both sides, plus 7 over 6. And by the way, 1 half is 3 over 6. So if I add these things, I remember I'm subtracting, so 7 minus 3 is 4 over 6. That's my left-hand side. And here they cancel, so I just have 1 fifth u. All right, now I'm going to multiply by 5 on both sides. And that gets me 20 over 6 is equal to u. And we should probably reduce that because this says simplify as much as possible. And 18 is 6 three times, so it looks like we have 3 and 2 more 6 left. Well, that's 3 and a third. Um, so let's see if it likes mixed... Um, what are these called? Mixed numbers? Uh, how should I do this? If I arrow over in front and put a 3 there... There we go. That'll work. So now I can put a 1 and a 3. There we go. Check. Some mistakes here. So first off, did I copy down correctly? No, I didn't. This was a negative. Now I regret erasing everything. Let's put it back. So that's a negative. 
which means that that's a negative, which means that that's a negative, which means that's a negative, which means that's a negative. Okay, cool. So um, let's fix this. So we should have negative three and one third. Uh. Third, there we go. Let's try that. There we go, great. Right. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh, double check when you write down problems, right? It's just so easy to miss something. All right, solve for y will do. So um, I'll show you something that when I first saw it in math seemed so weird to me, um, and it was because of the way it was written. So here's what someone did. They said, well, look, these are the same. So if I raise them to the same power, they're still the same, right? Like if I were to square them both, then they're still equal. And what I'm going to do is raise them to the negative one power. And I was just so not used to seeing people write it like that. But really, all this does is it flips it. y plus 2 over 8 is going to equal 4 over 3. It has to because 8 over y plus 2 is equal to 3 over 4. So if you flip it, you flip it, right? No big deal. Anyway, you don't have to write this. You could go straight from the stuff in red to the stuff in green right here and... Uh, that's totally fine, but also, I mean, you don't have to show your work, right? This is an online exam, so fine, whatever. Okay, but this speeds up getting y by itself because now it's in the numerator. So now I'm going to multiply both sides by 8 times 8. And now I have y plus 2 is equal to, and nothing reduces here, so I guess I'll just leave it as 32 over 3. And then I'm going to subtract 2, so ah, now stuff is going to reduce. Oh, sorry, let me, um, da, 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 minus 2. And what's 2? It's 6 over 3. And 32 minus 6 is 26. Okay, so it's actually not going to do that. I mean, all right. Uh, da, 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 da. Did I do that correctly? Let's see. 4 less is 6. Yes. Okay, good. And 3 goes into 24 8 times. So this is 8 and 2 thirds. All right. We have 8. And, oh, we can just write the mixed number symbol. Good. Great. 8 and 2 thirds. All right. Check. All right, solve for r. So look, s is just a number, so treat it like a number. Okay, p is also just a number, so treat it like a number. So let's add 11 to both sides, and while we're at it, let's also just oops, subtract s minus s. r is equal to p plus 11 minus s. p plus 11 minus s. Check. Continue. Great. Solve for x. Well, let's just divide the other stuff over. So on top, I have w. And on bottom, I divided the 8 over, and I divided the y over. All right, there we go. Solve for b. All right, so a is 2b plus c. Let's subtract c from both sides. That's a minus c is two copies of b. So let's go ahead and just divide by 2 on both sides. All right, and then we'll get B by itself. So we have A minus C over 2. <laughs> Almost done. All right, what's X? So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Um, some students might prefer to distribute the M first. Personally, I would divide everything by M first. And now I just have x minus a is equal to y over m. And then if I add a to both sides, I'll get x is equal to y over m plus a. Um, if you do distribute the m first, you'll still get the same answer. Boop, boop. You have xm minus a m is equal to, oops, equal to y. So I'm going to add a m. I have xm is equal to y plus a m. And I'm going to divide by m. Here they cancel, here they cancel, and we get right back here. Okay? So y over m plus a, boop, and continue. Okay, last one, riveting. All right, so we have a is equal to b minus c plus d over 3, and we want to get d. All right, so let's multiply both things, both sides by 3. It's now 3a is equal to b minus c plus d. And let's take away b and add c to both sides. Take away b and add c. Now 3a minus b plus c is d. 3a 
minus B plus C is D. Check. And we're done. All right, cool. Oh, shh.